Okay, before we go to our uh, data entry part in the SPSS, uh, I think we should talk about a questionnaire. At least in this video, we are going to look at the structure of a questionnaire. Uh, now, if you just look at the top heading, this is a questionnaire. And in questionnaire, what you're trying to do is that you're giving it to your respondents, the people who you want to fill your questionnaire. And what they do is you've already given, uh, given them some options uh, to which they are going to uh, tick. For example, I've just given this uh, uh, section one and I've said that please provide your answer by using a tick mark. Now, the first part of the questionnaire is usually the demographic part. The demographic questions that you are going to ask to your respondents. Now, they may vary from a questionnaire to questionnaire because uh, sometimes asking a demographic question which is not required uh, is not a very good idea. So you can uh, design your questionnaire according to your research and you can have a different number of uh, demographic questions, but this is just for the uh, sake of understanding that you usually start with these questions. Now, uh, in this questionnaire, we are talking about three types of demographic questions. That is gender, experience, and educational level. Because this research is about advertising agencies, that is why I've written advertising agencies. But as I told you that it's going to vary from a questionnaire to questionnaire and uh, a research to research. So let's suppose we have these three questions uh, in which we are going to collect demographic data. Now, what I've done is that in front of gender, we've already written a male and a female. Now in the advertising uh, experience part, uh, you can have your own options, but I've given as less than one year of experience, one to five years, six to 10 years and 11 years and above. You can have your own options. Uh, then in the educational level, I've asked about four options and obviously a person will have to take one out of these options, intermediate, bachelor's, master's and fill and PhD. So these are the three questions that we'll be asking in the uh, first part of the questionnaire. Now, what about the second part? The second part of the questionnaire will contain the items related to a variable. So if you just look at in the beginning of the section two, we have given a key. This is known as a key. And in this questionnaire, we're using a Likert scale. Some people call it Likert scale. Uh, usually it ranges from one end to the other end, having a neutral point in the middle. Now, this is a five point Likert scale because it has five points. One, strongly disagree, two, disagree, three, neutral, uh, four, agree, and five, strongly agree. People also use seven point Likert scale, nine point Likert scale, even some researchers use six point Likert scale. So it's not mandatory. Again, it is dependent on the kind of research you're doing. But this is this kind of scale is known as a Likert scale or a Likert scale. Now, what we are trying to tell the respondents is that they have to mark these statements. This is, for example, one statement according to this key. For example, if they strongly agree with this statement, then they are going to take five. And if they do not completely do not agree with the statement, they are going to take one. So this is the key with which we usually start our questionnaire. Second part. Now, I am in this uh, research, I am using three variables. We'll talk about the types and uh, the details of variables in a different video. Uh, but formalization is the first variable. This means rules and regulations, stringent rules and regulations in an organization. Employee creativity is the second variable and organizational innovation is the 
third variable. So here we are talking about three different variables. And as you can see, for example, for the sake of understanding, we are using this model. We'll also talk about this model in some other video. Uh, now I have a formalization as a one variable, which is independent variable, employee creativity as a mediated variable, organizational innovation as a dependent variable. And I also have this education as a moderator. So we need to understand here that the formalization variable has these number of statements. For example, this is statement number one, this is two, this is three, four, five, six, and seven statements to which your respondents will be replying you. So you can use their data to test your hypothesis. Now, these statements are also known as items, items of this variable, which is formalization. The same way we have some number of items for creativity, some number of items for innovation. So we're using three main variables in this research. This is just to make you familiar with the uh, questionnaire that th this is what a questionnaire looks like. Now further, we'll also have to talk about that. Where did this questionnaire come from? Now, usually the first part of the questionnaire is usually created by the researcher, depending upon what kind of uh, demographic questions uh, he or she wants to ask. But the second part is usually taken from previous researches. Why? Because as in uh, basic sciences, we use scales from uh, the previously developed scales. For example, if we use a foot ruler, it has already been defined. It, ha it has already been developed. We are just using it. The same way previous research has used these scales to measure certain variables. So when we take their items and we use it in our own questionnaire, that is how we adapt or adopt a questionnaire. If you take the, the complete items without any change, without any change, then it is known as the adopted questionnaire with O. But because other researches have been done in different areas, in different contexts, uh, maybe having a slightly different meaning of the variable, that is why when you are trying to take somebody else's questionnaire, somebody else's scale, you need to be careful. Sometimes you need to make slight changes. If you make slight changes into previously used scale and then use it, that is known as an adapted scale with A. So adopted when you do not make any change. Adapted when you're making slight changes. So the, the true sense of the items does not change, but it, it fits your context. So either you can go for adopted questionnaire or an adapted one. If you see that your variables are very new and you might be the first one to use it and you do not find any uh, scale that fits your context fully, then the third option can be used, which is known as development of scales. But we prefer that at uh, master's level, at bachelor's level, we usually use the previous scales for, for our dissertations, for our research and for our other uh, research paper writings. So for some of the people in PhD research, they use the developed scales. So because that is a, that is a process itself, the developing of a questionnaire involves a lot of steps. So that is why we try and use the uh, 
uh, scale that has already been developed. So this is all about the questionnaire. Now, the last thing that we note here before we move on to our data entry into SPSS is that when we'll move to our SPSS, we will be making the codes in the SPSS. It's very simple. For example, when we are asking, asking the gender question, we have two options. The first option that we've given is the male. The second option that we've given is the female. So let's suppose we will call the first option as number one and the second option as number two. The same way when we are asking this question, experience in advertising agencies, we'll be taking this as one, less than one year, then two, three, and four. The same way educational level, one, two, three, and four. And when we will go to this Likert scale, here we've already coded all our items. So we need to remember that one, two, three, four, and five are the numbers that we are going to give it in the SPSS sheet. So when we'll move to our SPSS part, when we'll be putting our data into SPSS, you need to remember this coding. We'll also talk about it when we'll go to our uh, data entry into SPSS. So you need to make sure that you've understood uh, this part really well. Because if you do not understand your questionnaire, you will not be able to understand how you're putting your data into SPSS. So in the next video, we'll be moving towards the data entry part of SPSS. Thank you very much.